Hello everyone and welcome to a draw video. I had planned on doing graphite today um, but honestly I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like pen and ink so we're gonna try some pen and ink and uh, with just a regular nib I have here a manga G nib um, which is you can you can learn about these things in my tools and techniques videos for pen and ink if you have not watched them before and I have quite a few um, nib holders and they all have manga G nibs in them I really like manga G nibs because they're stiff enough to make it easy for the beginner to draw with, but they have enough flexibility to give you line variation. A lot of drawing, really good drawing nibs are super flexible and people find them really tricky in the beginning. So this is a great one when you're not um, very experienced with the nib. And I've got here this mixed media pad that I love. I've been using it for everything. <coughs> I have not used it for pen and ink yet. So we're gonna give it a try. <coughs> um, I also wanted to talk to you about Iron Gall ink. And Iron Gall ink is a, a very, very old way of making ink from the galls from oak trees, all right? And there are many videos, I'm not an expert on it at all. You could, if you're interested, you could, you could watch some videos about it. But I have here, a bottle of handmade iron gall ink from a company called Fox and Quills. Um, they make calligraphy ink for dip pens. This is not, you cannot use gall ink in a fountain pen, it will ruin it instantly. So um, this is only for use with dip pens. And the thing is about iron gall ink is, it's just, it's really fascinating. And depending on how it's made, um, cork out it gives you all different colors and results so this one is called iron throne and it really intrigued me because it starts out as this light blue and almost immediately will turn a dark blue black so it's just kind of fun right so I'm gonna dip my um, and I might even actually just use a pipette and fill my nib that way Just put it over here for now. And then I can let the excess drop off and it's just sort of in the nib. And we'll just see. Um, so this is iron gall ink. And a lot of times the color of the iron gall ink will change right on the page in front of your eyes. So this is, rather narrow, but you can see as it dries, it's going to get darker and darker. This is the ink that writers used in the 1700s and 1800s. Jane Austen wrote all of her books by hand using an iron gall ink. So it is, it's old, it has stood the test of time. And it's a really beautiful ink to draw and write with. So I'm gonna see if I can stick, Just it's full enough that I think I can just stick it in there and it should work pretty well. So when you're using inks like this, um, you're gonna get pretty much one color. You're not gonna wanna dilute this with water because um, it just doesn't work very well that way. You need the viscosity of the ink for it to flow well through the pen. Um, let me show you something else. If I put down some large quantities of this ink, and then use water dropper, put some water in it. And let it flow. Let's just watch and see what happens when it dries. So it starts out this beautiful, beautiful blue. And I believe as it dries, it's going to get darker and darker and change right before our eyes. Um, but it is a gorgeous ink and it has a beautiful viscosity. It's really, really lovely to draw with. But when, when you're drawing with it, <clears throat> you're gonna have a certain color, right? It's gonna, and remember that it's gonna get darker as it dries. And if you want things lighter or darker, what I tend to do is um, do a quick dip in water 
and a quick tip in water will lighten it a little bit. Okay, it's still gonna get darker as it dries, all right? Or you can blot with the tissue. And you know what? I left my tissue on, on the counter. I'll go get it. Okay, so if I'm drawing, for instance, and I'm doing some hatching and cross hatching, and there's a part that's really dark that I don't want really dark, I wanna lighten it up, I can just blot and it will lighten up, okay? So blotting is a really nice way to get some variation. You can also dip, you can dip into water and it's going to give you a lighter line, but it's gonna give you a lighter line for that whole nib worth, okay? So a lot of times I find that having a tissue on my hand and just blotting something is a really great way to get something to be a little bit lighter, especially if I put too much ink on, all right? So those are some tips to use with ink like this in a dip pen. Um, there are some inks that you can dilute and have many different wells going at the same time, but honestly, it's so, you know, I have found it so much easier to dip, okay? Um, to get different variations or to blot. Okay, so we haven't done pen and ink in quite a while. And I think, I think one of the main things that, that like keeps people from doing it is the fact that it feels so permanent. And, and you're right, it is. Um, it's, you don't, you can't really erase, um, when you put a line down. So a lot of times what people will do is they'll do a light pencil drawing first and then they'll use the ink to ink it, right? But what I thought we would do today is to work on something that's a little bit more free flowing, all right? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you a pattern that I kind of made up. Um, to, to draw some beautiful leafy designs. And it's a great way, I think, to, um, to practice with pen and ink. So I'm gonna start on this practice page, okay? And, and let's just make this practice, okay? And then you can do a whole page of it and I can show you some examples of work I've done this way. So you, you're gonna start with a line Okay, and then you take another line, you start at the top on that same line, and then you bow out from the line on either side to make a leaf shape. So you're going to notice, um, I'm just so not used to dipping because I use the kakimori now. <laughs> it's so much nicer. Oh my God. Um, so you're going to notice that you can get sort of a heavy situation happening here. If you don't like that, blot it. Okay. But then you're going to, you're going to head right next to it. All right. Put another one down. Do you see how no matter what I do with my lines, they're all meeting back to a point. So I'm gonna go behind here. If I, if I cross another shape, I stop, I pick up, and I go. Cross another shape like that, okay? And again, if you don't like the heaviness of it, you can blot it, okay? But I kind of, personally, I leave it. All right, I leave it. And I blot in a different way. All right, and then up here, I'm gonna go in between, okay? Start here, and I end up back at that line. Yeah, I'm just not used to dipping this often because of um, 
the khaki more knit, and I might switch over just so you've seen this now and I'm gonna make my life a lot easier in a minute. So if you like pen and ink work, I just highly recommend those khaki mori nibs, All right? But you see how they sort of evolve one, one after the other. And you can start putting your own, you know, your own touch and your own twist to this. All right, I'm gonna go get my khaki mori. That's just driving me crazy. These nibs are forever, um, no fun anymore after after using after using a khaki mori nib. I'll be right back. So I after telling you about this iron gall ink, um, I I want to move to something else because I don't want to dip my pen in there, and I really don't have anything to pour it into right now. <coughs> so I'm going to use just a, a regular pigment based ink. That's the other thing about the iron gall is it's it'll stand the test of time, right? This, um, and this is pigment ink and it will also stand the test of time. Fountain pen inks don't do that. You gotta, you know, they're not worth using in fine art. They're, they're for play and fun and sketchbook work and things like that, but not for works that you want to stand the test of time. So this is my khaki mori nib and, and you'll see how much easier it is to use. So it, the color might be a little bit different, but that's okay. So I'm I'm sticking to the same plan, right? And I come out from behind. So this is just sort of a pattern that I came up with one day. I was doing some some artwork, and I just really, I really, really enjoyed it. And you can twist your center lines. But the main thing is, is that you always go back to the center line, okay? So what I want you to do is practice this, right? And then, sort of put your own pattern together. So, you know, um, create your own piece of work with this, with a pattern that's like this one. Okay, God, that ink is gorgeous, though, that iron gall. Um, <clears throat> I just need a little dish to put it in, and I don't have one right now. So if I use a little bit more ink, it gives me a different look, right? It's really, um, and you can go bigger, smaller, more curvy. I'm always starting on that line. Okay. And that's what gives me the beautiful sort of flow of this pattern. So I'm going to show you some work. Um, I've got one piece left that I did this way. And I've got a new one that I've um, recently started. So this is one that I did, and I'm th this is not for you to copy, right? Um, but <clears throat> this is using sort of that flow that I started with, with this patterning. And then I added graphite to it, and I added gold leaf to it. And it's just, um, I don't know. It's really satisfying work, so I'm, so I'm hoping that by teaching you how to how to kind of get these patterns to flow, that you can use it in your own work and find to do it, find a way to do it that's unique for you, right? So it's a lot of fun and it's really beautiful and it's really satisfying and meditative to do. So here's a piece that I started and I am going to work on this piece. And just work on it a little bit to show you sort of the flow of it, okay? And and the ability to just kind of go thick, thin, whichever, ever which way. And I just need to move some of this stuff. <clears throat> it might be too big for this space, but we'll give it a try. 
I think I can work on it just right in here for a little bit and show you. So with a regular nib, it's it's going to be exactly the same. You don't have to have a khaki mori nib. I'm just completely spoiled now and um, regular nibs just aren't doing it for me. But I'm going to show you as I'm doing this um, how I blot it as well. So I'm going to start um, maybe right here. And start to put a bend in this work. And then I can take the tissue, if I want to, and blot a little bit. And that's just going to give me variation overall. I don't always do it, okay? And sometimes I'll even go back in and add a little darkness by just touching it with ink, which is really fun. <clears throat> So I'll do variations on it, right? It's not always the same, but it has a flow to it. And depending on the piece and, and what my final sort of vision is for it and the feel that I have for the piece, I'll change the way I'm doing these interlocking patterns. And see, sometimes I'll go in <clears throat> and I'll fill an area, okay? And I kind of like the depth there, so I'm not going to touch, I'm not going to touch that. I like the darkness of that one, so I'll leave it. I really didn't, don't <clears throat> need to even dip, but it's kind of fun. Okay. So the other thing you can do is you can combine different colors when you're doing this, right? And you can combine mediums. You could do this sort of flowing pattern as part of another piece, as part of a mixed media piece where you just add a little bit with graphite. Even. You don't have to do it with pen and ink, but there's something really lovely, I think, about letting that ink flow. And I could even go in here <clears throat> and fill in a spot, right? So with the khaki mori nib, it's not going to work to dip, 
to dip water. You're going to have to blot or you're going to have to mix up different shades if you want to use different shades. Um, because if I dip, it's going to suck too much of the ink off. And I just tried it. I don't think, I just don't think it'll work. But with a regular nib, you can definitely dip. And it works really well. So I'm not sure where this is going to end up eventually. I know I'm going to work some graphite into this and maybe even some watercolor. When this ink dries, it is waterproof. Um, so <clears throat> I'm not sure what the end result will be. So things can disappear kind of beneath other. <clears throat> and I want things to break the edges. So I've made a pencil edge here and I want my, my lines to break the edges sometimes and, and other times they won't. They'll stay within the boundaries. So I'm hoping, <clears throat> I'm hoping you'll try the patterning and just let it sort of evolve for you and see what happens. When you don't have like a finished product in mind and you just kind of let things flow one thing after another. This is also a really nice way to get a feel to get a feel for pen and ink. If you don't want to draw something representational. I have lots of videos on representational drawing with pen and ink so you can in my books too. Um, you can look those up. If you, if you would rather try that. But this is just something really nice about this open-ended. And the thing is, is that you're learning pen control and you're learning what it feels like. Remember, I go behind, stop, and pick up again. This is intriguing me here, so I'm just going to use that. Well, 
like it's behind. Yeah, okay. So it's, it's, it's really very simple, but I think the more you do it, and you can see like how different this one is than this one. So depending on, on sort of how you're feeling and, and the flow of that day, it's gonna turn out differently. Um, try different colors. Try it with watercolor too. You could, you could actually, if you didn't wanna do pen and ink at all, you could try it with a brush and load like a liner brush with watercolor and try painting these patterns and, and switching colors in between each one. And I think that would be really interesting. All right, so give it a try. Get your, get your inks out and your nibs if you have them. <coughs> Exercise them a bit and see how you feel about it. And if there's interest, maybe we'll do a bigger, more representational pen and ink project in the near future. But I just wanted to wanted to have you dust off your pen and ink and, and give this a try. And I look forward to seeing where you take it and where it leads you. All right, everybody, see you soon. Take care.